Hey everyone, Diogo Marques, your friend in sales. In today's video, we're going to cover the main ways for you to get leads as a salesperson. Before you get started, make sure to subscribe and click that bell notification below so you can get notified every time that we make new videos like this. So let's get started then. The number one way for you to get leads as an insurance person or actually close contracts on the spot is selling door to door. This is the process that you go actually to a business owner or say like enter a building and start knocking on doors essentially. That's pretty much it. And out of those people, you're going to close some. So this is a pretty, it's a method that is very dear to my heart because <laughs> that's how I got started. I have a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun doing it. So this is my best way for you to start business like right away. And I can tell you right now, if the business economics works, meaning let's say you pay, you get paid immediately, or let's say that's a, a low time span until you get paid after you made the sale, this is the very best way for you to get out of poor land because it's immediate. Actually, the same building that you're living, right? <laughs> you start knocking on doors, that's pretty much it. The guy signs the contract, you submit the contract to the company that you're working with and you get paid, that's it. I'll be honest with you, one of the, well, as an entrepreneur, you get broke several times, but <laughs> one of them, I was broke, so I started selling door to door. I made 2000 in the first week. I'm not kidding, this is true, because I just started banging on doors and doing <laughs> what comes natural to me. So people like get into the thing and like, they get signed like 50 bucks, 50 bucks, 50 bucks, 70 bucks, 30 bucks, and you get the, the whole thing si signed and then <laughs> you get paid. So it's one of the best ways for you to get out of broke land. This is the first one. The second one, and I'll be honest with you, it, it's not my preferred one, but it's more effective in a way of volume. It's cold calling people. And what I mean cold calling people is that, because there's, there's a big difference between calling leads, someone that typed in the form or something like that, and actually cold calling someone. They're they not expecting you like at all, right? So you just have to do a little bit of scrubbing. And what I mean by this is that you look at the list and like uh, choose the best ones that look um, more likely to be best candidates, uh, candidates suited for your product or service. So essentially you can cover more territory because you can do, let's say 100 phone calls, right? And you, you might say, well, it's 100 phone calls and you can do 500 doors a day. And you can actually, because let's say it's a building, it's like a, a tall building and like a bunch of units and you have like a bunch of them in a row in the street. It's like you pretty much can, can do 500 doors a day with no problem. So the, pro the, the issue here is essentially people at home, people answering the door and people closed. And pretty much everyone will answer the phone. Not, not like everyone, but the, that's the highest percentage ratio of people that actually answer the phone. So you actually will spend more time talking to people when you're using the phone, uh, beside, whereas selling door to door is a little, it's a, the ratio is a little, is a little lower. But it's more effective in a way because you're in front of someone, it's more confrontational. And by the telephone, people usually have that distance in between you and the phone call. So you have to use some, use some mind tricks in order to get them like hypnotized by your voice in order to get them like, is, they, they stay in the phone call, right? So this is, these are two ways of doing things. And I'm currently, because we have the COVID thing, I'm doing more uh, telesales, but both of them are very effective. The main key here is in between both of them is you understanding that the type of product or service that you have, probably you're going to have this in a one, one step method or a two step method. If you're selling door to door, it's one step method because you, you get there, like you convince the person, you loop them, you do the, you do the whole shenanigans and then they, they sign the contract, right? So it's a one time thing. Whereas when using the, the phone, it's different because probably most likely if it's a completely cold lead, what will end up happening is that you are essentially calling to get a meeting and then close them, close them in the meeting, right? It's a little bit different because it's not a one step process. Okay. So these are just two different ways of doing things. The third one is essentially direct mail and you essentially write a letter or come up with a cool uh, postcard or flyer or something like that and have them delivered. That's pretty much it. I did that and I can tell you my experience from it. It, it wasn't a good one, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not saying this because I, I find myself because I'm a door-to-door -door guy and now you need to adjust, right? So I'm now, now doing telesales. But I did some direct flyers. Uh, yes, I th yeah. 
last year, yeah. I did, I think, 5,000, 5 or 6,000, yeah, something like that. The first uh, 1,000, I just did, like, a couple of experiments, like, actual letters, like, different letters, and just sent to, like, a, a couple of people that I had closed previously when I was selling energy contracts door-to-door. -door. So I just sent them letters, I'm not saying it was me, because they probably didn't remember, but I sent them, like, letters to see if they could, like, sign the application, but <laughs> it didn't work. And uh, I, I think I spent, I think, 500 bucks. <laughs> the experience didn't, didn't, didn't do well, because a lot of work, a lot of mental Jedi thing into going to the letter, and <laughs> I didn't get anything. So, yeah. And then I tried the flyer method. And the flyer method, actually, I have one here, I think. I did this using Canva. See, it's me. And it, I, I started, I did two, two different methods of this with this flyer. I got uh, like in a lower to middle class area and delivered, I don't know, I think 1,000 of them. And then I just waited and I got, I think, two responses and I got uh, two vehicle insurance. I'm not interested in auto insurance, but well, <laughs> at least I got something out of it. So, yeah. So it's a good way because the way that I was looking at it is like if they could get referrals from someone after they did vehicle insurance, maybe I could do the life insurance, which is the thing that actually pays the bills around here. So, But that was an experience. Then I did, uh, I went to high net worth um neighborhoods and hand delivered those myself and i actually <laughs> knocked on the door first and my my plan was let's knock on doors first do my whole thing and see if we get anything and if it doesn't work i'll hand deliver the flyers anyway i'll leave them at the, the inside the mailbox so i got i think one two three four five six people maybe to answer the the door and I think I, I went the whole thing and I think it's like around I don't know it's like it's thousands of houses man it's a serious like I went I started in the morning and I remember like it was like started at eight o'clock in the morning and it was like eight o'clock at night and I was still there so I don't know a lot of houses and the main difference between those is that <laughs> I found I was more tired because buildings you have like more units per like square footage because you're like one step and like you have one unit a couple of more steps and you have another unit this one you're talking mansions <laughs> you have to walk a lot until you get to the next one so you get more tired but I, I got five or six people that i talked to none of them closed but still i still got some contacts from them so i think they're a bit more suspicious because they're used to going to like an investment bank like it's not common to, to see that, so I don't think, maybe they're a little bit more suspicious. But nevertheless, I, did have the, I, I do have the contacts, so I'll keep working on these and finding different ways until I actually convert them to clients. Maybe, maybe not, but that's the results that I got. So, uh, regarding flyers, you can try them. I didn't, didn't work for me that well. And actually, I tried a different way of doing this. There's this, uh, if you are in the US, the final expense, those kind of look like government notifications, those work there because my I have some colleagues there that told me that they use that like for, to get leads to their business. It doesn't work here. <laughs> At least then for me, it didn't work. And these ones were the ones kind of more like closer to the, my objective. And I got a couple of responses and I closed a couple of them using the phone. So this is my experience using this. Then the other method is using uh, is using social media. And there are two main ways of you to look at this. The, main, the first one, it's the fastest one, is using a performance marketing company because these guys can, can usually perform because they, are, they live and die by the sword. So essentially they are delivering you leads because you, you are paying based on, like, on the acquisition, meaning if, like, if the lead it says you have like, let's say you agree with them, let's say five bucks a lead, right? And you agree with them, let's say a 500 buck, like uh, first payment. So essentially they're going to bring you like 100 leads, right? But out of those 100, some people won't answer the phone. Some of them are pretty much tourists. They pretty much filled in the form and they're not, they're like, eh. And then there are a couple of them that are actually closable. Out of these, these people, some of them you will close and some of them you will not. So essentially you agree on what's called a CPL, it's cost per lead. They will send you those, but then you agree with them saying, listen, if the ones that you are bringing me are not qualified because they just typed in the lead form and they're not interested at all and you can 
pretty much tell it by when you call them. Or if they don't answer the phone, I won't pay you these. If they agree with these terms, they are pretty much good people, right? Because they're saying, listen, obviously we're bringing in people that you know they don't answer the phone. Like, why would we be charging you, right? So if they agree on these terms, this is a good thing. On the other hand, you, you need to be aware of, because I got a company that did that and I didn't like that at all. It was, that was uncool. They are reselling you leads that they already brought into, let's say, an insurance company. And that's not cool because you're calling people, they are telling you these are new leads and they are not. You are calling someone that pretty much is telling you, I didn't ask for anything, right? So these types of people, but you don't know that until you actually give it a try. So you wanna stay away from these types of companies and these types of leads because you'll burn out very quickly because you're talking to people that's lower middle class, they're very rude, they're very discontent with their life and they're pretty much waiting for someone in their day so that they can blame in order to like blame for their circumstances. So that's pretty much not cool and you're gonna drain you as a salesperson. So you wanna steer clear from those ones. Whereas the first ones are pretty cool actually because they want something, right? And they're already waiting, pretty much waiting for your phone call. So you call them and then you close them, right? So this is the performance marketing part of it. The other part of it, it's the most important one. It takes more time to build and this is the one that I'm working on. I'm still working on this, it's learning as you go is because there's no schools for this. It's building a social presence. And I can tell you that the top salespeople in like from all likes, it doesn't matter if it's car, if they sell cars or if they sell real estate or vacuum cleaners or whatever the case might be, they have a social presence. And I can tell you that the top sales, uh, car salesperson in the world, he pretty much is well known in ways where he lives in his district. Everyone knows he's the one to go to for cars, right? And this is something that I'm working on very, very hard. Let's say, um, let's say it's like associations. Let's say any type of networking type of deal that you have in your area, try to go to them all. Obviously, you won't get all, all of them. But if you start getting known in your area for the one that sells real estate or vacuum cleaners or fixes TVs or whatever the thing might be, right? You're the one, you're the number one guy or girl to go to, right? And this is a very privileged position because when people are looking for you, essentially, you don't need to do uh, more cold calling because <laughs> they pretty much, it's the other way around. They start looking for you. So the best way for you for you to do that is start building your brand, start building your figure of authority and this takes time. So if you are using social media because you can get your message across to like to the whole world, let's say you are a real estate person in one country and like it's a very well, uh, people are looking into buying in real estate in that specific country, they start looking into you because they see your profile, they see your videos, they see all your stuff, right? So it's just a matter of, I believe, and at the point at what I am at right now, it's a matter of time. Because you get one lead and then you start getting a bunch of them and you start getting much more of them and then start bringing you referrals and start the building start building from there. I'm not there right now. This is what I want to be in the future, to be honest, because cold calling using the telephone is very burdensome. I get tired doing that. But this is my main vision for the future. It's like being very well known in life insurance so that when people come to Portugal, they know me. This is, this is my, this is my uh, approach to this as I'm, while I'm developing my business. So this is a social media part of it. Other methods of uh, selling is include referrals. And this is a tricky one. And what I mean by tricky one is that obviously if you are getting referrals, people on one hand are pretty much pre-sold on you, right? Because they're calling you pretty much because their friend, your first client that you are working with like for a couple of years now, they are referring that person to you, right? So when they call you, they already have like their nose a little bit to, to the ground because they're expecting a figure of authority because you come on highly recommended, right? Whereas if you call that same person, if he didn't know you from Adam, right? It's a cold call. So if you start getting referrals and you build referral from referrals, that's the ideal situation. But one thing that I've been talking about in my videos is that this is a point that it's come, sometimes like people address this, but it comes a little off because it, it looks like you're doing things wrong if you don't have referrals. And in a way it's right, but on the other, way, on the other hand, it's like not everyone is gonna give you referrals, right? Because you don't have an existing relationship with that person or that person is like a, pretty much like someone is not, 
there are some people that I will fully give you referrals. They, they like you, they understand the, the business that you do, that they see you as a helpful person, and they all start, and you get pretty much referrals back and forth. I have an, a, a friend, pretty not, just started building a relationship. We've been working for, let's say, I think two years now. He's a mortgage broker. He's pretty much like <laughs> send me referrals like on a regular basis. So it's like, it's pretty cool, right? And every time that I have something, I, I throw back to him as well because it makes sense. I, I want my clients to be well taken care of. And it's think of the same client in the same way. When he has a client that needs a specific product from my end, he refers them to me, right? So the idea here is pretty much getting referrals and building your business on a referral basis. And this is pretty cool because you start getting aggravated every single day to having to like doing cold calls on a single, on a regular day basis. But what people are not telling you that when people are telling you about referrals, referrals, that not everyone is going to give you referrals. And if you don't get referrals from the client that you just closed today, what is it that you're going to do tomorrow or in a couple of now in the, the next couple of hours? See what I mean? So the ideal situation is for you to get referrals and have a referral based business. But if you're not there yet, you need to have business, right? So you need to keep on one hand developing your social presence. And I'll be honest with you, just a caveat on this. My mentor, he does two million a year in life insurance premiums. He doesn't agree with this at all. It doesn't do social media at all. It's just cold calling basis and now it's referrals on referrals. That's his way of seeing that and I respect that. I don't see things at this point in time because I think people are in fact looking uh, like for your services, but they don't know you. That's the only impediment essentially. Like they don't know you right? because if they knew, like, and if you do have a valuable product and you do know what you're talking about, why wouldn't they buy, right? So it's a matter of knowing you. And since this takes time, I don't see any problem of keep, develop, keep developing a social presence so that in the near future, everyone knows you, right? You'll be more helpful to people because you can actually get customers from the US or customers from England or customers from Taiwan or Vietnam or something because they're coming here to Portugal looking to get a golden visa, for instance. So they're looking to get like financial planning and I can help them because I know the business well. Right, so this is an example where they say they go to the UK because you're like a top real estate developer and they're looking for a specific type of property, right? So they don't trust you because they saw your videos, they saw your blog posts, they saw everything about you. They start like connecting with you. This is important. Economies must go across borders. I think I believe this. Although it sounds like counterintuitive because in the beginning I was telling you about being very well known in the area that you live and I'm, I, I swear by the sword in regards to this, I, I believe this is a re really great idea. But on, on the other hand, it's like, well, you keep developing your business, right? So that's like the main goal, right? But until you get there, you, you need to like do some sort of experiments and keep developing your social presence. I think this is very important because when you come to realize is that every single day is the same. It's, it's, it's this pretty, pretty kind of intriguing way of looking at life because you, you come to realize that let's say you want to have one trillion bucks, right? Now, how is it that you got there, right? It was like you, you kept taking steps until you reached your goal, right? So what is it that entails that step? And it's essentially that step is your day, right? Every single day, every st single step, that, every single thing that you are doing needs to be aligned with the end goal, right? And the problem with service-based businesses, meaning a real estate or if you have a marketing agency or you sell vacuum cleaners or whatever the case might be, or say accounting services, whatever the case might be, it's, about, it's a trust factor. They need to see you as a figure of authority, but someone that they, they like you, right? And I'll give you an example. I have the days that I'm so frustrated, I, I don't even want to pick up the phone. And because essentially you're, you're calling with people that they don't know you, right? And if you don't have like the odds in your favor in that day, essentially spend the whole day calling people that they don't want to do anything like to do with you. So you end up your day frustrated and exhausted, right? Whereas I had one day I made the, a direct sale when I was like selling door to door. It was two business owners, like a restaurant owners. And I did the largest life insurance policy here in Portugal, right? And it took me like 20 minutes, right? And I felt good living afterwards and we, we've been keeping this relationship. So it's like, it looks like two worlds, right? On one hand, you have people with money, right? 
and they like you and they sign the thing and you live there feeling like energized, re-energized actually, feel, feel bad about yourself, right? You're doing a good business, like they like you, they keep, they actually give you referrals and you keep talking to more people. So that's ideal, right? But your, for the majority of your time, at least mine, this has have been my experience, I keep spending my day talking to people that they don't want to do anything with you. So it's frustrating, right? Because it's the same, it's the same situation, it just dealing with different types of people. So what I would encourage for you to do while you are developing your business is that you need to keep developing your social presence. This is key. You need to keep developing your social presence, showing people that you know what you're talking about, keep improving your skills as a salesperson or let's say if you are selling a specific life insurance product, let's say, keep working on your knowledge on that product so that every single day you get better until the trillion dollar day, right? Actually pretty much nailed it because you actually know everything about the product, right? You're a specialist, right? In order for you to become a specialist, you need to keep working on developing your knowledge regard in regards to the product. Same thing regarding to like dealing with people, same thing. So this is what I wanted to share with you. So the main ways for you to get leads, at least for me, what I've been experienced so far in my, in my career as, as an entrepreneur, the first one is door to door, bar none, is the mo most effective one because you are pretty much in their face, right? And if you don't know how to do things right and how to conduct yourself and how to read them and how to uh, understand the body language and personality types, you're more effective. This is the uh, one that is more dear to my heart because it, it, if, if I were to die today and I, I wanted to have a smile on my face, I would just start remembering the days when I was selling door to door. It doesn't matter. Anyone, any day, I just have good experience. It's like great experience. I keep have a smile on my face. So life insurance or energy contracts or any, or vacuum cleaners, like door to door, top notch. The second one is telemarketing using the telephone. The third one is performance marketing. And the variation of this is keep developing your social media presence. And the other one was flyers, not the, you need volume, but there are people that work well with this. I wasn't one of them, but these are the main ways that I wanted to share with you in regards to developing your presence, keep conducting your business and developing your, essentially your deal flow, because you might be the best salesperson, but if you don't have people to talk to, and this is frustrating, you'll end up frustrated because you might be the world's best salesperson, right? Or personette, but you don't have anyone to talk to, right? So I wanted, wanted just to give you a word of encouragement because this, this is not easy. This is not easy at all. And everyone, anyone that comes and tells you that this is easy and you're doing things wrong, you, they're lying because <laughs> this is not easy. You get frustrated. I just wanted for you to realize that you need to keep developing this. And obviously the referral business, I kept this one to, to the end. This is the most important one, but you need to keep developing this because if you are looking to like steer clear from everything cold and just focus on a referral base. But if you don't have enough referrals, how are you going to con conduct your business today or tomorrow or the next day, right? So remember every single day that you are talking to someone and you close them, don't wait one day, don't wait two days, don't wait, don't wait one week, start banging them in regards to bringing you referrals, like get a couple of them to give you referrals because if you don't, you're going to be, you're going to get crucified because you keep you needing to do more cold calling and this is pretty much exhausting and burns out pretty much every day. I'm not telling you like your candle and you're going to burn out, but it's like it's very exhausting psychologically. So I hope this helps. Remember to subscribe and if you have any further questions, let me know and I'll be more than happy to jump on board and help you guys out. Peace.